Hello everyone, Amber here with the team at Social Sleep. I'm so excited for today's call. I have the opportunity of interviewing Barb Proya. She is an amazing mompreneur and I was so excited for her to share her story with other women and um, moms that are excited to start their own business or kind of figure out what they want to do in life. So um, Barb, I'll let you introduce yourself. Who are you? Hi, I'm Barb Proya and I am a mom mompreneur. It's kind of hard for me to say that, but um, I'm excited to be able to share a little bit of my background. I have, um, I actually have a master's degree in labor relations and I find myself um, having been my own boss for the last eight years. So it's a little bit different than originally what I thought my career path was going to be. So it'll be fun to share a little bit of background and how I got to where I'm at. Awesome. So how long were you in corporate America or worked for somebody besides yourself before you started your business? I was in corporate America for almost 12 years and I worked for three different Fortune 500 companies. I worked for um, Baxter Healthcare and then um, Citibank and then PepsiCo. So wow. I uh, had a lot, a variety of different experiences with different kinds of Fortune 500 companies. What made you take that leap and know that you want to work for yourself? Like, I'm done with corporate America. This is it. Well, I wasn't actually done with corporate America when corporate America was done with me. So <laughs> it, it's a little bit maybe um, opposite of what some people experience, but probably more like um, a lot of people's experience because um, I was actually Citibank was my last job. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, we were informed that the business that I was working in and as a VP of human resources was actually going to be disbanded. So I had a choice to either, um, uh, job with another company or uh, move to Long Island city, New York with the bank. And, um, it just so happened because I was pregnant at that time. My husband and I decided that I would take a little bit of a break because we also had a toddler at home. And um, from there, things just completely changed. So corporate America was done with me. I really didn't have an intention of uh, becoming a business owner at that point. And, and so life kind of presented some opportunities along the way to make me see that there was an opportunity to do something pretty cool. Okay, so did you take some time off from corporate in that like position or did you find something right away? Nope. I was at home with a three-year-old and by then um, my daughter had been born. So a newborn and a three-year-old. And um, really I was at home with them for almost six or seven years before I started doing anything else or been thinking about it. So I was at home, I was being mom, I was doing all of the things that, you know, moms of toddlers and babies do. And it was just, I didn't even realize that in the back of my mind, I was starting to think there's got to be more, like there's got to be something yeah. else. Not that being a mom isn't a great um, and important calling, but for me, having had a master's degree, I just felt like I wanted to keep my mind yeah. And working in corporate, I'm sure you are working a lot more. So to just, I mean, you're still on your toes with staying home with the kids, but just that transition, did you struggle with um, like who you were as a, as a person? Did you like lose sight of that at all? Or I think eventually I started to wonder, um, like, again, like, was there, is there, there's obviously more, um, Where's my value and my contribution? Um, the interesting thing is when I had told my mom that I was um, quitting and I was going to be at home with the kids, she was like, well, so when are you going back to work? You have a master's degree. <laughs> that had kind of defined me for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in a human resources function, so I was involved with people all the time. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that was sort of nagging at me was that I was feeling more and more isolated, even though I was doing a lot of stuff with the kids, yeah. um, I, same interaction that I was having when I was working in corporate America. So I think for me, an opportunity presented itself. And then I started thinking, oh, that might be something that I could totally do. So I didn't have a grand plan that I started working. Right. Um, came to me and then I realized, oh, I can make this something really cool. Okay. So 
what, um, talk a little bit about what that opportunity was and what made you like know that it was a right fit for you? Because that was the opportunity that you're still, you're still with today. Um, so how did that present itself to you? Well, it was kind of random. So in hindsight, to me, isn't random, but I've always been a lover of gifting. I'm a big proponent of um, gifting for the individual and making it special and unique. And I love fabric and I love bags. So uh, I didn't even know that this opportunity existed with 31 Gifts to um, be a direct seller. But when I saw a bag that somebody had, I actually went searching on the internet um, to find out about um, there's my son. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he realized. Um, and um, sorry, I lose my train of thought. And I so I started researching it and found out that there was an opportunity to be a drug seller. And I thought, mm, you know, I'm gonna, let me try. Let me do oh. it. And what it ended up being was it was my outlet. It was my opportunity to connect with people and uh, to kind of get my brain thinking again and setting some goals and working towards goals, which made me feel like I was contributing, you know, and, and keeping my skills up. Um, and it's kind of morphed into something that was a lot bigger than I ever thought it would be. Um, but it's given me the opportunity to set goals mm -hmm. and work towards them. And it's challenged me in ways really that I've not, wasn't challenged in corporate America in different ways. So it's been amazing to be able to uh, build the business. And now I'm even working in, you know, kind of spinning off into a, a complementary business um, with the organizing. And wow. it's been uh, a huge bonus to have my kids watch me as an entrepreneur, my husband, we own a small business as a family as well, but he's not, I mean, he works in an office and in a warehouse, so he's gone. The kids see him a little bit working, but they get to see me working every day, whether it's yeah. not in the office, whether it's with clients or even some of my team members that are here that I'm coaching and they see the direct impact, um, but the flexibility that I've had because I'm working from home. Um, on my own terms. Yep. And I think that that's a big thing um, as, as mothers, why we start our own business is because we want that freedom and flexibility, but we also want to find something that we can make money at. So picking, you know, a, a drug sales business can be kind of risky going into it because nine, you know, I would say maybe eight out of 10 times people don't stick with it more than a year. So for you to be with 31 Gifts for eight years, I mean, that's amazing. Um, what type of obstacles and success have you had over the eight years of being with 31 Gifts? Well, I mean, the first you really have to be okay with getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's funny because in the human resources capacity, the people that I did not like to work with the most were the salespeople. <laughs> and so this was never really even on my radar screen of something that I consider doing. Uh, and so you really have to get over those fears of, oh my gosh, this is something I've never done. Um, and really look at your business as your opportunity to connect and uh, provide a real viable um, solution uh, for people. And, um, you know, I think I go, I keep going back to the, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. And so, um, a lot of times in, in direct selling, you can get bogged down with all of the fears and the, I can't, and things aren't going really well, but if you're not, you can isolate yourself with all of those things. Um, and so it's really just keeping those fears and those reservations and that discomfort at bay and just saying, you know, what am I willing to do? Yeah. Oh, and I do feel like a lot of times direct sellers are, you really have to know what your purpose is and it's totally okay to be in a business and to be fun. Um, really have to know what your purpose and your goals are so that you can set some action plans and achieve them. And if you really do want to be successful and make money and build a team, you really have to keep asking yourself, what am I willing to do? Yep. Yep. And I think that's, 
different than any other business, really. You right. know? Yeah. And that's one of my favorite things um, about what you've done is you're not just selling bags, you're selling solutions. And for, you know, busy moms on the go, being able to provide that value. And I think that, you know, that is hard for stay-at-home moms or just women in general that have a business, whether it's a direct sales business or a small business, finding that their own value, you know, what is their purpose? And you have found something that you love to do, which is organizing and how 31 can mix into that. But then how can you help moms, you know, just those simple solutions of creating that command center, that place where the whole family can you know, come together. And so how, at what point did you think of taking your business to the next level and incorporating the organizing? Because that's something I'm sure you've always done. But when did you recognize, like, oh, this is something else I can add to my business? So I'm not just doing one. Yeah, so it really has always been kind of who I, you know, I am in terms of organizing and keeping things a little bit more structured. Uh, but I think maybe it's been about two years where I really realized that I'm not selling 31. I'm selling me and my brand and what I can provide. And it just so happens that um, a lot of the solutions that I have for people can, you know, can be encompassed with what I'm sharing with 31. But I found that I was sharing a lot of other ideas in addition to that. And it was, it's a perfect compliment for me because that's where my interest is. And that's where I feel like I can really make a difference with people, whether they, whether they're buying the 31 container or not, um, that I can add value there. And so it was, for me, it was kind of a natural outgrowth but it was also that what am I willing to do? Because I knew that I had to make this bigger than just the 31 product to grow my business in the way that I want to grow it. Right. Uh, and just like getting my feet wet. My, so my son's going to college in the fall. My daughter will be going to college in two years. And so I'm starting to think about in two years, like I want to have my organizing, you know, piece of my business full, full blown so that I, I can be doing that because I'm going to have a lot more time. And so I've just yeah. started by little building that in and knowing that my timeline is a little bit longer maybe than most people. Right. Uh, I've got a, you know, a bigger goal at the end, but I just knew it was that, what am I willing to do? Like, I've got to make this and I want to make it bigger than just um, 31. Yeah, I think that, um, like, that's such a powerful thing because a lot of times people will be with a drug selling company or even in our, in my case with social speech, I mean, Kate and I have had our business for 10 years and not until this past year have we actually created a personal brand. It was always just the company. So being able to have that personal brand and know that you're, you're so much more than just the product you're selling. You know, the first rule of networking that we open up is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So building those relationships is huge for you, I, I'm assuming, because that's how you're going to be able to build your business. Right. And that's what I want people to think of when they think of me. I don't want them to think of 31 so much as, uh, you know, I'm creating solutions for people to make their life better. It just so happens that some of the solutions may be 31, right. uh, that it's the bigger picture that I'm about, you know, the organizing and the solution. So if there is one piece of advice, that, of advice that you can give a, maybe a new mom or a, a stay at home mom that's looking to do something, whether it is in direct sales or small business, what would you advise them on stepping out on their own, doing something else? Well, I think really the first thing is that you do have to and real growth in your business, whether it's staying within, you know, the group of people that you know, or, you know, just stepping out and doing something different, it's going to be uncomfortable, but that's okay because that's where the real growth is. That's like, you know, that's where the magic is when you step out of your comfort zone. Um, and it's amazing to see how 
um, empowering that is every time you step out of your comfort zone and do something that you're not quite sure about. Um, and the other thing is, it's really, to me, it's so mental. And I said it already, like, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that's, um, it's a mindset. Uh, and to reach out for resources and help because none of us can do it alone. None of us have all the answers. Um, there's somebody who's been where you are. And um, in my experience, you know, entrepreneurs are more than willing to share their experience, you know, what they've learned, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and to help someone else come along. And so, um, you know, to keep reaching out for resources and connecting with people who can um, share their experience and encourage you along the way too. Awesome. Well, I, I thank you so much for hearing your story. And um, my last question, do you ever look back and wish you were still a corporate? Never. <laughs> Never. Um, you know, I think a lot about different jobs and I've had people ask me to come back and in different capacities and even, you know, doing, I don't ever want to work for anyone other than myself again. I mean, just that if I'm going to put in that time and that energy, I'm going to do it for myself and for my family. Yeah. And my kids have had an amazing experience with me having that flexibility and I can't imagine not, you know, continuing to have that with my kids. So nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, you know, I think usually that's a no, never, but sometimes you go, well, you know, I wonder what it would be like, but I think that you know, leaving corporate or, ha you know, being an entrepreneur, you really focus on what your core values are and what's important to you. And then you find that business or you create that business around that lifestyle you want. And you know, I know from a personal experience, just what you've been able to do from owning my own business. I know the traveling that you guys have got to do from owning your own businesses that, you know, the kids. They wouldn't have had that opportunity, most likely, if you were still in corporate. Because corporate's not going to pay for trips for you guys. They're not giving away free stuff. No. And, you know, just as an aside, I've got an elderly dad, and he doesn't mm -hmm. where I live. And so that has been a huge eye-opener for me in the last couple of years. I've been going there once a month um, for a week at a time to deal with health issues and other things with him. And I thought almost every time I got on the airplane, I would have been fired by now. Exactly. I tell them once a month for a week, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flying out to Michigan to take care of my dad's business. And so it's, you know, in ways that we couldn't even imagine, you know, our family has been blessed and benefited by that flexibility um, in so many different ways. Yeah. It's a huge blessing to be able to have freedom and flexibility. For sure, for sure. So if people want to connect with you, learn more about the organizing or 31, how do they find you on um, social media? Well, they can find me on You Organized by Barb Proya on Facebook, and that's probably the best way to connect with me right now. I'm just starting to build my Instagram presence. I'm sure I'm going to be learning a lot from you guys <laughs> that. Um, and you can always just search for me, Barbara Root Proya on Facebook, and I'd love to connect. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Bye. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.